<coughs> Before we, uh, Larry brings us our invitation to sing, we'll sing 877. 877. Sing verses one and three. Sing. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful then? In the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful then? Won't it be wonderful then? Having no burdens to bear, joyously sing. With our bells all ringing, won't it be wonderful then? There where the tempest will never be sweeping up, won't it be wonderful then? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us, won't it be wonderful then? Won't it be wonderful then? Having no Won't it be wonderful then? I always enjoy singing that. Learn new songs and just get an opportunity to praise God and, and with their voices. And that's the way God intended to be, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? I was thinking about this passage that Andrew read a while ago, and I, I really like, like this passage. And, you know, I guess it's a preacher's prayer in a way because Paul is talking to this church at Philippi and how much he cares about it. And I was thinking, he says, I thank God for my remembrance of you and always in every prayer of mine making requests for you with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the day until now. Being confident of this very thing. And I, I was thinking about, you know, here, he, he had a relationship. You know, and that, that preachers have relationships with churches. And, you know, they grow to love and care about one another. And it's really an awesome thing when you get to think about it to, you know, a lot of times pre preachers are involved in areas of life that many people never really know outside of the preacher and the families that they deal with. And it's really an awesome thing. And I was thinking about Paul's relationship with his church and how he tried to encourage them. But, you know, I wonder how much they, they, they encouraged him as much as he did them. Because he just keeps, he talks about his remembrance of them and how faithful they were. And I think about the faithfulness of people here and, you know, the love that they have for God and how important that is. And, and I just thank God for you. And I, I know that, that's, uh, that's the way it ought to be. That, you know, to know that God has blessed us and that he continues to do that. But I like this. He said being confident of this very thing. You know, as Christians, we ought to be confident of our faith. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we don't, maybe don't speak up and stand up and say the things that need to be said, but we need to do that. We need to have confidence in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what he, he said. I, he said, I am confident uh, of this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, he, he talks about, he's talking to people who, who become Christians. He, he says, God, when they became Christians, they, he began a good work in them. You know, that's a good work. When a person becomes a Christian and, you know, and you start thinking about God is working in his life, uh, you know, uh, through the word or whatever, ever how he does, God is working in his life. And, you know, we ought, we ought to rejoice that, that God is working and God is working in your life uh, for his honor and glory. And Paul realized how important this church was and his relationship with them. But he, he says, I'm confident that God did this. I, I know that. He said, I know this. And I know that when you became a Christian, God began to work. And I don't know what work you're involved in as a Christian, and I don't, I don't know what paths you're going, but I know that God is working in you to use you. He said, I'm confident of this, and I'm confident that God is using you in the kingdom of God for a reason and a purpose. And you need to live that kind of life. You need to let, let that light shine and realize that God is working you, in you. And he says, until the day of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes back, you think about the glory and honor that's going to be brought to God and through Jesus Christ because of what you've done and the life that you live. And you know, you, you, we want to live that kind of life so that when we do stand before Jesus in glory, you know, that when we have to give an account, and you know, knowing that we'll, we'll receive a reward in heaven forever and ever, and you know, the struggles and the heartaches and the pain of this life, and, and this church here at Philippi, they, they were, you know, here's the mark of God's people. You know, he's confident in them that God is working in them. And I'm confident he's working in you for his honor and glory. 
And I hope you're living that kind of life. And I, he says, just, he says, as it is right for me to think of this of you, because I have you in my heart. You see, Paul loved these people. He cared about these people. He, it was about relationship. And I, I think about, do you have each other in your heart? Well, that's, isn't that great that we know that we can say that? We have you in our heart that we care about you, that we're concerned about you. And we don't just, it's not just lip service. You know, a lot of people give lip service to this. But as a church, we care about one another. And we love each other. And, and, you know, we're bound together by that love, that agape love. That love is sometimes even the unlovable. But here, he, he makes it clear. He says, I have you in my heart. And as much as both in my chains and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of the grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you, all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And he said, And I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense in the day of Christ. You know, he mentioned that twice, the day of Christ, the day of judgment, that, that you'll be without, without offense. You'll stand before him cleansed by the blood of Jesus, washed in your walk with him and I hope you know as you're walking today you're walking in the light you're having fellowship with Jesus and he says as we have fellowship with Jesus we have fellowship with one another in our relationship I hope you're right with Christ tonight as church you know church we, we praise God and we sing and, and we thank God for each other and we thank God for what Jesus has done and making it possible and, and to have that confident feeling that we're bound together by this love Paul had that he loved them and he cared about them. And we care about one another. We care about you tonight. If you're here and need to respond to the Lord's invitation, we're here to encourage you and help you. And if you've never become a Christian, you know, what a great night to put Christ on in baptism. To have your sins washed away is an easy process. To come make that good confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Stand before this audience and make that confession. Repent of sins and go into the waters of baptism. Have your sins washed away by the precious blood of Jesus. And begin that walk in Him as part of his family. You're here tonight need to respond. We encourage you to come as we stand and sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? table is prepared for those who may not have had an opportunity to partake of that this morning. If you need that opportunity, you can make that known by coming down as we sing the first verse of number 332. 332. We'll sing one verse there, and if you need to partake of that, come down and you'll be served. 